Arsenal fan since I was eight years old. Arsenal is my team. I love the history. I love the players. Uh, and of course, I love the fans. So as I look at that, I just see a tremendous opportunity to set a real vision for the club to bring it back to its glory. And I want to establish trust with fans and I want to engage the fans again. So to answer your question, I'm very serious. Um, you know, uh, I have secured the funds for it and I want to uh, bring a what I think is a very compelling offer to the owners. And I hope they hear me out. Uh, Daniel, they don't seem to be interested in selling, though. And unlike a public company where there's other things you can do to conceivably pressure them, here I suppose it's only the fan base, but, you know, they've made it clear we're not sellers. Yeah, but, you know, as I started out saying, I've been a fan for 30 years uh, of this club, and I uh, certainly didn't expect that this would happen overnight, uh, and I'm prepared that this could be a long journey. But, you know, all I can do is prepare what I think is a very thoughtful offer and bring it to them and hope they hear me out. Cool. Welcome back to the Football Terrace. Daniel Irk has confirmed that he will be making a sizable and compelling offer to try and buy Arsenal Football Club. We know, of course, that the Conkeys have said that they are not selling. It is not for sale. There are rumours that maybe Daniel is using this as a ploy to continue to push his own ventures with, with Spotify. We have seen a £300 million, a £300 million increase in the valuation of Spotify Spotify ever since the announcements were made. But he has gone public now. He has been interviewed, and you hear him say there, loves the club, has a passion for the club, wants to make the club better, and will make a compelling offer to buy Arsenal Football Club. He has confirmed there will be an Arsenal takeover bid, and Gooners and football fans in general, we want your views and opinions. And Elliot John, you called it clickbait, and now he's come back and said, sorry, my bad. Yeah, he literally said that. Like, he didn't say, I confirm an Arsenal takeover bid. That's just my rewording of it. But he literally said he's going to bid to take over the club. So that is on its way as it stands right now. Um, we don't clickbait on the football terrace. We only tell you what the media or people are telling us. That's it. The journalist says it's a done deal. We say done deal. The journalist says it's fallen through. We say fallen through. Get with a program, my guys. Do you know what I mean? I love it. I love it. I love it. I really, really do. Um, he's confirmed it. Yes, he has. And we want your views and opinions. We're going to share the link on. We're going to share the link on Discord very, very soon for you to come on and have your say um, and have your chat here. But it is trending like mad right now across social media. Um, and this is one of the quotes that he said, I want to bring the club back to glory. I'm very serious. I've secured the funds. And a lot of people said, does he really have the money? One thing we did say a couple of days ago that was true is billionaires know a lot of billionaires. And he, even if he doesn't have all the cash himself, he'll find people willing to put the money in. You'll find people willing to buy it. Rich people know a lot of other rich people, generally speaking. Do you know what I mean? Love like a little fundraiser. You ever seen like a Batman film where they have a fundraiser? It's one of them ones, isn't it? They'll get together. There'll be a few cocktails, a few glasses of champagnes, and someone will write them a check for 500 billion quid. And that's pocket change. Different world, these people. Different world. I wish I lived in it. I wish I, wish I lived. Imagine that. How much do you need? 500 mil. Yeah, I've got, I've got that sitting about. Do you know what I mean? There you go, mate. Bosh, have a bit of that. Okay, they, they probably don't say Bosh either. Um, but there we go. We've got KJ and we've got Danny Devil in the details waking, waiting backstage. But do me a favor, hit that like and that share button. We want to hear from you right now on this breaking news that has come out. Terry, his friend is the owner of Google. Yeah, I mean, he's, the owner, owner of Google is probably worth a little bit of money. Probably a little bit. Like, he's probably got a little bit of spare cash, you know what I'm saying? Help his friend out by the club and all that. Uh, let's get KJ on. Let's get Danny on with me here as well. Afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, what's your reaction to this news? The dream is alive for Arsenal fans. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was all nonsense. I thought this was all PR, boost the stock price, blah, blah, blah. But clearly, he's serious. He hasn't gone on NBC 
and organise that interview for no reason. He hasn't said he's secured the funds. He's, be, he, he's not fronting. He's not fronting. This guy wants to buy Arsenal. And if you're an Arsenal fan right now, you're just going to be hoping and praying that Stan Kroenke is just, is just bluffing and wants to boost the price up. But there is a price that he will sell the club for. And if you're an Arsenal fan, oof, maybe, just maybe, just maybe the nightmare might be over very, very soon. Maybe. do you, Danny, do you see Arsenal selling, though? That's the big question. Do you see Arsenal selling yourself? No. I don't see... Uh, it, from a business perspective, it makes sense to wait for the new Champions League deal to kick in and the new television deal for the Premier League to kick in, which is going to be in the next... Yeah, from 2024, there'll be two new deals. So the commercial revenue and everything else will be going up. So the value of the club... So the value of the club is going to go up in the next two seasons. Why sell now when you can wait two years and sell then? So I don't think he'd sell for that reason. That's, that's just my opinion. But the dream is alive. You never know. Yeah, that's that's the big thing. Keja, how about yourself? You're a Man United fan. You want to see this kind of news from the Glazers coming in. How does it make you feel seeing it? Well, for Arsenal fans, obviously, I would I say be excited uh, and have hope. Um, will it go through? I think it's, a, it's probably got, what, a 20, 30% chance of coming through. So... That is a low percentage, but still have the faith that you've got someone who's actually seriously wants to buy a football club and who's also a fan, who also is a fan. I think that's the most important part in all of this. It's not just some businessman who's just seen Arsenal as a cash cow. It's not just some random billionaire who wants to try and sports wash their country. None of that. He is a genuine fan of Arsenal Football Club. And that plus money is a dangerous, dangerous opposition for Cronky, because he will listen to the fans. He will, he will, he will get the fans on board. Get the fans on side. I wouldn't be surprised if there's interviews coming out now saying uh, how much he loves the club, how much he listens to the fans, how much the fans are right. He will get the fans on side, and once he does that, it could be a long, long time uh, for for Cronky in the short term. Because why would the fans go back? Why would the fans go back to the stadium when they they can they can wait? And the new ownership come in and then put the money back into the club. Um, again, very difficult deal to get done. But Arsenal fans have hope. And as a United fan, not going to lie, semi-envious. I'm envious, bro. I'm envious. Like, I wish Man United had the same kind of love. Someone who's a billionaire with the same kind of love for Man United that this guy has for Arsenal to actually want to buy and, and change it and, and go forward. But yeah, man. Do you know what, um, Arsenal fans be excited. But aren't you happy though? We don't even have. I'd rather not be like teased about it. Like, yeah. If, if anyone comes to buy Man United, any billionaire watching, don't make it public. Just do the deal private. So I wake up in the morning and I see Man United are bought. Because <laughs> if you're an Arsenal fan right now and you see all of this happening, and it ends up with bid rejected, Cronky hundred percent is not selling. Your heart's going to be on the floor. Your heart's well, going to be on the floor. Yeah. What's really interesting about it as it stands right now is that the bid that they're looking to put in, I'm only reading uh, sort of media rumours, is going to be about, well, the first bid will be about $1.8 billion, which is $200 million below the valuation. But that makes sense because they owe nigh on that in terms of debt. So it will be, we'll pay $1.8 mil and we'll clear the debt. As an example, that make once we once we're in, we'll clear the debt or or, or uh, what's not. I still still have debt. I thought they cleared that. No, I, I, I read they've got debt still. I haven't done a deep dive into their finance. Yeah, it was fans saying, claiming. I remember, yeah, asking fans saying, "We're debt free now. Why aren't we spending money?" Like, no, oh, okay. Debt free. You're yeah, <laughs> it, it, I think I think there is still like much, like there is still some debt issues there. But they've cleared but, most of it. Yeah, but most of it's done. Most of it's cleared, as, as you say. It's 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 just an interesting. one. Legitimately, it's an interesting one for me. Uh, to kind of look at, and I don't want to be the person to dampen it. It re it's the only thing Arsenal fans need to keep doing is putting this pressure on, make those protests bigger and louder, threaten not just threaten, take away the money because, like we've said before, it's a growing asset. It's going to grow in valuation. It's going to grow in income. It's going to grow in profitability, and it's going to grow their portfolio. If Arsenal fans don't act with their feet and protest with their wallets. It makes it easier for KSE to to move away, and I know Gunas are very very excited about the prospect of the club um, being sold, and I actually do hope for them that it gets done. But at the same time, I would issue an, an air of trepidation and say hold back a little bit from getting too giddy and excited because if Cronky and Stan are telling the truth and they just say no, 
then you know, what, what are you left with there? But it's, it, I think it is good to, of course, see him come out. Uh, Daniel Irk, uh, Ike. Uh, I keep hearing people Eck. say, Eck, Eck. there we go. That's the one. I keep getting it wrong. Eck, uh, come out and say what he did. Uh, Elite K, not Elite KJ, he's already here. Egal is with us now. Egal, <laughs> what do you make of this breaking news this afternoon? I was watching it live on CNBC. And I was as I was watching it, I was just hoping that they were going to ask him a uh, quicker, uh, the, the Arsenal question. And the journalist kind of knew what he was talking about. He said, Casey, we're not going to sell. He... Daniel, uh, Daniel Ike said exactly what I expected him to say, that he's going to make a good offer and he hopes that they hear him out. To me, that means when he says that he hopes that they're going to hear him out, that means that he has a price that he's willing to pay and, the, uh, and he understands the price that the club is worth and he might, be able to, he might be able to give them an offer, but he might not go over what he's expecting. And when he says, the, when the Cronkies say they're not looking to sell, there's a price point anyone is looking to sell. Everyone will look to sell at a certain price point. And it just, to me, what is that price point for Arsenal? Is it three, is it three billion? Is it 2.8? Or are they willing to go less than the valuation of the club? We'll have to find out. But today is just, it's a stamp of authority by Daniel Ike to, in an interview that has nothing to do with the actual takeover and has more to do with his business. He, he was, he was open to, to these questions and he invited them. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It must be very, very exciting times for you as an Arsenal fan looking at this. You know what? I, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get overly excited. But don't lie, I'm not gonna lie. During the stream while I was watching, I did yell a little bit and go, "Come on!" Because, because it was almost like it was almost like an own goal for us. Uh, 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 it was almost like an own goal conceded on the Cronkies because at this point they've been saying that they're not selling. They've been saying they're not going to entertain any offers, but he's openly saying that he's going to submit an offer. So if if he's looking to submit an offer, he must have heard through the pipelines that they are actually looking to sell because if it's just, oh, Cronky out is trending, so now I'm going to try to buy the club. No, there has to be some inkling that there is a potential opportunity for him to actually buy the club or else he wouldn't be going through all this tr- trouble. The, I know, I know Harry's first in the time, back. I, about say, I know, I know Harry's in the background in that, but um, I've got a question for you. Um, what's up, Harry? I've got a question for you guys. Do you think... He has been planning this in secret for a while now. Or is it legit just he's seen the protest, he's seen the Super League, he saw everyone's uproar, and he's like, screw it, let me just do, do it. Let, screw it, let me just go do it then. Because I was seizing the opportunity. Let me, like, I let me go for it. So you don't think this is something that he was planning? You just think he's like, yo, you saw the opportunity, now's the time, go for it. Yeah, I think he's seen an opportunity, and it just coincidentally came with end of quarter where he's going to be on TV and everything else. So I'm not thinking he planned this all out. It, 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 you, you really have to be smart to plan everything to a T to this level. No, no, it's no, like, no, oh, I'm, I'm, Super League's going to happen. Now that there's a protest, I'm going to go buy this club. No, no, That's I'm talking about, no, what, what I'm, I'm not saying he planned out all of the protests to happen. I'm saying, was he going to buy Arsenal at some point anyway? Like, this is this is strictly business one on one. You see opportunity to pounce on a, a, to increase your net value by by the value of Arsenal. You just need to uh, you just need to come up with enough of a consortium to buy the club, and I think he can do it. Was it was it planned? I don't think it was planned. I think this is a spontaneous uh, mm. uh, plan. But now that he, now that he's trying to do it, he's going to put plans in work. This is not going to happen overnight. This is not going to happen over two days a week. This is going to happen maybe. It won't even happen in this calendar year, possibly. This whole deal could take that long. We all know how long it takes to buy a house. Imagine how long it'll take to buy a house. You'd be surprised, actually. You'd be surprised at this. I mean, in terms of the agreement being uh, an agreement being, you know, being arranged, they can be quite quick. You know, the way the Sheikh bought Man City. That was quick. Like that was no, quick. No, but th- there's a reason. Roman Abramovich as well. There was a reason. Yeah. The Sheikh bought Man City from a guy who physically could no longer be in the UK, who was about to get arrested and needed to sell as much assets. So, as a so a goal, are you saying Kroenke is going to resist, but Ek is going to stay persistent? That's why it will take long. Is that what you Ek mean? is going to get enough co-investors until the Kroenkees have... I think Ek, if he's in, in, as serious as he is right now, he's going to get enough co-investors where he has a consortium big enough to give them an offer that they cannot refuse. That is the only way they're going to do it. If well, if Dan yeah. Gotti was buying Arsenal, he's a one man buying the club by himself. What what Daniel Ike is doing, he's trying to get a consortium, a team of people to well, all he says he's board directors it, and part owners. Goal, he says he's already got it. So in theory, yeah. if he's ready, let's say he makes a bid within the three opening months. Offer, 
why would it stretch? One point eight billion is not okay, realistic. But, but why would it stretch over a calendar year? I've never seen a Premier League club bought over a calendar year. It's no, but you. Two to three when months. was the last time? It's probably you because the Cronk is already stubborn. It was that's not for right. sale. Yeah. Well, Harry said it. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, Harry. If he rejects the bid and he comes with another one, or he bides his time, then that makes sense for it to take a calendar year. But I don't see them negotiating for a year, especially if his stance is I'm not selling. That's, that's what yeah, I, I I think the stance would alter when the fans potentially go back into the stadium, and if there's things like a loss of match day revenue, if people don't buy the shirts, if people don't buy the yeah. programs, people don't buy the food, people don't buy the beer, then it might click in their head and they think, you know what, let's take that big offer and let's go away. But if the fans don't follow through with that, if the board make a few good signings in the summer and suddenly everyone gets that pre-season optimism when Adidas release the new videos and myself included, we get all excited about the new season. It, you know, it, all, it, it all might get forgotten, but who knows? Uh, this What's so great to see is I've been so critical of the game recently, especially with the mercenaries in leadership positions and it's almost taken the love out of the game. But it's nice to hear someone speak about the fans. I know it's almost just a PR stunt, but it's good to see that someone wants to almost take us out of this mess, take us out of this, this trouble that we're in and hopefully help us get to the next level. But yeah. make, make no mistake, Cronkies, man, listen, they're, they're billionaires for a reason and they're going to play hardball. They're not going to sell for... For, yeah, for, yeah. for anything, it, you know, it's going to be huge, huge, an astronomical fee, an astronomical I, fee. And, and you know what's interesting? A few people are coming at me saying, Terry, you, you said you don't think it will happen. Go back to what I actually said. You are either going to have to pay well and above the valuation or the fans are going to have to take their money away. And if you listen to everything that's being said there by Harry, he's kind of bought on that. Like but if they, if someone, they've bid three billion, you'll get them, you'll bite their hand off. Why would they turn down an additional billion pound above valuation? If fans start actually protesting in a tangible way with their wallets and they stop pumping money in, they stop going to games as the match day revenue reduces, that reduces the value of the asset. And if they can, if they envisage that that's going to continue, they'll sell now because they want to get as much money as possible. Fans, fans have so much power at football clubs. It's just whether or not you have the stomach to go through with it. And I say that as a Man United fan who doesn't have the stomach to stop watching Man United. So I, I'm, I'm talking from a position of I know what I'm willing to do and what I'm not willing to do. I might be not. To yeah, me shirt. neither though. I'm 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 not not going to go to the game. I've I've heard a few fans hint that maybe you know don't renew your season ticket and things like that. But like, I'm wholeheartedly against that because then you are you're affecting the team, you're affecting the support, and so I'll 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 be there in the stadium. I will be, but what I won't do is add to the extra revenue. A season ticket takes a very long time to get. And if you reject that season ticket, then you'll be on a waiting list for a very long time. And people work really, really hard to, well, to reach that status. I, 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 I get that, but this whole, oh, it's going to affect the team, affect the players. Bro, they've been playing without fans for how many months now? Yeah, yeah I know, and we're 10th. Like that, 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 uh, your team will play how your team will play. Maybe they'll get an extra boost with the fans in there. I get that. But it's not like they're no longer used to fans not being there. They're used to fans not being there now. So for me, it's like, why go back? Why help? put money in the pockets of these guys that you want out just for sentimental support. You can still... It's really easy yeah. to say, like, I think it's really easy to say to someone, don't go, don't go to the game. But then you have to consider the, the situation we're in. Uh, mentally, there's been a pandemic. We've been out without football for a year. I miss going to the Emirates terribly. So I, I totally get where you're coming from. And if, if I could be that black and white with it, I'd say, yeah, do you know what? I'm not going to go. But... Listen, I'm, I'm not prepared to say I'm not going to go. I'm prepared to say I'm not going to buy kits. I'm not going to spend £5 on a packet of Maltese and a box of Pringles. I'm not going to do those things. I'm not going to buy programmes. I'm, I'm not going to do anything, everything I can above and beyond to support the team. But I'm going to go there to support yeah. the players, to support the team, because I feel like that's my, that's my duty as a fan. I mean, if it was 1995, not renewing your season ticket would have an impact, right? Because back then, season ticket revenue was a significant amount of sort of what the club would generate, right? But in 2021, that's actually not a large percentage of Arsenal's revenue. For and Arsenal, someone else will take it, right? Someone else, yeah, will, take someone else will take it. But it's what Harry spoke about. Arsenal built that new stadium to maximise revenue by selling you stuff in there. So if, if you know, if you attend, yeah. but you do not buy so, anything, not a single penny. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah, Danny, uh, but Danny, uh, uh, but Danny yeah. if, you don't, if you don't attend at all, you're still not buying anything anyway. Because you're not there to buy anything. If so, no, one's no but you're not attending to hurt right, the finances, KJ. Right? You're not attending to hurt the finances. Yeah, Sorry, you're all, I think you're, no, that's cool. You're all talking sense. And I, you know, I don't want to go around in, in, in circles too much. All generates revenue. I think the biggest thing about fans not being there, and whether it's you renew your... I understand giving the season ticket up, 
There is that. Imagine you imagine all the Arsenal fans who give their season ticket up, and then five weeks later, uh, this Daniel fella buys it, and then you apply for your season ticket, and you got to wait ten years for it again. There'll be a sense of pain there, and, and I understand that. But there is a way around this. Liaise with the people trying to buy the club, and they say, right, you'll give up now, but there's a list, and you'll get it back when we take over. Like there are ways around it that you can work with it. However, the biggest thing about fans not being there is the impact it has on television, because. Have any of you tried to watch the games without the fake sound? It's for me, there's elements I like about hearing what coaches say, but the atmosphere is dead. I, I didn't have the sound on yesterday when Mason Mount scored his goal or when Real Madrid equalized. It was just like, uh, it felt like a training goal. If, if, do you get what I mean? If you make your stadiums like that for Premier League games, I'm telling you who's knocking on the boardroom of Arsenal, BT Sports, Sky Sports, who we all say control football anyway. I think there's loads that needs to be done. I would say to Arsenal fans, be happy that he's really going to try to buy you. But I would still say slow down your enthusiasm, you know, curb that enthusiasm, as it were, because there's a long, long way to go with this. And, and, and Harry's right. If fans do keep pumping money in, if there's no sign that the asset is going to de devalue for the Cronkies, and if the Cronky out campaign quietens down, I think it's easy for them to stay. So my message to Arsenal fans is clear. I actually, as a Man United fan, want you to be taken over. I want this to go through because I want bad owners out of football. But you are every bit as powerful in this as the, as the potential new owners. You need to protest. You need to keep the energy up. You need to boycott putting as much money as you possibly can into that football club as an example. And you need to keep the noise high and loud. Protest before every single home game. Even if you don't have a ticket, be there and do something. You've got to put that pressure on because it, the... As soon as you take your foot off the gas, the easier it's going to be for them to stay. It really, really is. So that's but, just uh, a quick compromise for Harry. Very quickly. Keep your season ticket, mate, but don't go to the game. That's what you need to do. Yeah, or, or, or what you call it? Um, keep the season ticket, scan it, because I know they like, if you don't go in after like so many games, they'll call you, say, where have you been, blah, blah, blah. Scan it on the thing, come straight back out. I don't know how you've been there. <laughs> Because if you pay for it anyway, can't a minute. But don't be in Listen. that stage. I'm saying, Arsenal fans, have your ticket, scan the thing, walk straight back out and watch the game outside the stadium to let them know that I'm not, yeah, we're no, not I, here to support you. Man. That's easy to say, KJ. Yeah, that's I, easy I, to I, say. I agree but with the But when it's a man. part of... Oh, go ahead, Harry. Yeah, man, I, I agree with the, with the notion in that and the almost like the, the sentiment in that in that process. But I also believe in the 12th man and I believe that when you get a stadium pumping that we can have a positive impact on the team. And I think at the moment, the situation that we're in, we need that as much as we do miss, miss uh, as we need new owners. We need some positive, a positive environment in the Emirates stadium. And I think the fans can create that. I'm all for a walkout during the game. I'm all for a, a big round of booze. I'm all for leaving my seat. But honestly, I, I, I'm not going to get on the on the bandwagon of don't renew your season ticket or, or don't go to the game. I think our job is to support the players on the pitch. Because when the new owners go, when managers go, when when new players get sold, you know, when your captain gets sold or Vieira leaves or Cesc Fabregas leaves, we're still there all the time to support the players on the pitch because, you know, that's our duty. So I, I'm, I'm really, I find it really puzzling when people say you want Kronke out, but you want to go to the games. Yeah, I want to go to the games because I want to support my club. Like I want to support my club first and foremost. That's what I want to do. And, and that's what that's what I want to do for, for many, many more years to come. And, and do you know what, mate? I, I think every, like I've said all before, I've got what I think will work and everyone's got a different view on the right way to protest and everybody's free to sort of do that. I, I just think the tangible action is going to be needed to keep the pressure up. Um, it really is because I don't think this is... The way I'm seeing some people celebrate on Twitter right now, it's like the club's been bought by... Mm. Uh, by, I could give forget his name, Daniel uh, Eck. Eck. Eck, Eck, Eck. I've got to think of Eck, Eck now. Uh, Daniel Eck is just, it's, it's, the, it's the early stages. Let's see what happens. This bid could be rejected. Uh, and I, I would just it's say... Most likely will be. Yeah, but I'm not talking about this particular bit. I'm talking the takeover attempt in general could be rejected and nothing changes. But what I'm saying is be happy someone's looking to do it, but don't be like, yes, we're safe. I'm, I'm just saying that because it's that hope that will kill you. By the way, if this happens with Man United tomorrow and a Sheik's coming in or, or or another billionaire wants to buy us, I will have the same energy of I'm going to keep my powder dry until I hear the words bid accepted. And then what you have to look at is, and this is just being sensible, who and where is he raised that money from? And do they want a return on that investment? I'm not saying mm -hmm. you won't try to put 
winning football matches at the forefront of what he's trying to do. But um, you do need to be careful as well. Uh, my my brother's club got taken over from Eddie Hearn and was bought by a billionaire who said that they wanted to t- he wanted to turn Leighton Orient into a Champions League team within ten years. And the first like year and a half of him running running Leighton Orient, he was doing that. He was paying people twenty grand a week to play up front for him. And then he got bored <laughs> and oh, it didn't work. And then he pulled away. And I'm not saying um, Danny Beck is going to do that, but just, I would say, yeah, you remember that footage of David Beckham when I think England went one nil up in a game against a group game against uh, Argentina. He's got a penalty and he was at the penalty spot telling everyone to breathe and calm down because everyone was getting excited. That's my message to Gunas right now. Just breathe and relax because there's a long, long uh, way to go. And I mean that genu- I mean that genuinely from the bottom of my heart. I really, really do. Because Newcastle, get back Newcastle, to the fans, Newcastle, Newcastle fans thought they were going to get taken over a year ago. Man United fans thought the shakes were coming in about two years ago as well. And it doesn't always happen. Yeah, go on, Nagel. Um, You know how KJ is saying protest and don't go to games and everything else? I've spoken to a lot of people who go to games and match-going fans, and they say it's not just their day to day on a match day it's literally their life when it comes down to it they've revolved their whole life around going to games they revolved their whole life around arsenal they wear arsenal kits around the house that's like their home shirts you know what i mean and it's just it's just their day-to-day thing and it can it, it can actually affect you if you're a person who always goes to games and always is a person who who revolves your life around this and it's gone just like we found out during lockdown a lot of people miss football so much that it hurt them physically mentally and going to games is just not it's not that simple for some people i'm not saying it's it's me specifically and i'm not speaking on the behalf of those people but we have to look at that as 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 a as a reason why some people would never protest the club now, that to that extent. No, I und- I understand it. I understand all that. I'm not saying that I don't. I get it. I'm a I'm I'm a uh, what you call a religious man. So this whole revolving your life around something, going somewhere all the time, and not being able to go there can affect you. And I, I understand that. But then I also understand when when you want something so badly, you need to make changes. Now, some sometimes it can be simple like. Um, not buying fizzy drinks, not buying you mean drinking sacrifices, water. Sacrifices, KJ. Yeah, but this I'm talking about. If you want something like this, it's a sacrifice. You will have to sacrifice something, and it's just about how much you're willing to sacrifice. Me as a Man United fan, I wouldn't sacrifice no shirts, not going to stadiums, not buying whatever thing there is. I, I'm willing to do that. Like I am. I don't. Even, I don't have Sky Sports. I don't have BT. Like I'm not subscribed to MUTV. I'm not. I haven't got the. I'm, I'm not subscribed. I'm, I'm not following Man, U, Man United on Twitter. Like, I'm willing to go that far. The, the furthest I won't go is not watching them at all. That way, I can say, yeah, cool. Like that, that's my limit. But for me, I'm just like, yo, these things are sacrifices. That if you truly want it, you have. Sometimes you have to go to the extreme, and 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 that for me is is putting everything aside and doing what you got to do. Yeah, I, again, and that's that's the key point here. Everybody's got a different view on what's the how far they want to go, and and and, and no one. I'm not judging anyone. Like I've said, if somebody screams Glazer out, Cronky out, but buys a new kit, a new tracksuit, renews their season ticket, and goes to every game, I don't have a problem with that person. Like it really ain't that deep for me. My only message is, if everybody operates in that way, they're not selling. And they're definitely not selling because you're just tweeting a hashtag. The hashtag means nothing. You know, we've seen this in every, look at every walk of life that people are trying to change at the minute on this planet. The only thing that actually ha- you've got to, you've got to do something tangible, like tweeting a black box or tweeting a hashtag or screaming at the top of your lungs. It only goes so far. There has to be tangible action taken against people. And one of the biggest things we've seen, just look at the Super League element, all the brands and the TV companies and everybody else that came out and forced to defend us fans. Why they do it? Because they worried about their back pocket. It was their back pockets being hit that led to the outrage. If if they were all going to earn more money through this, it would have been a very, very different um, scenario altogether. There's, there is no doubt about it. But let's not get let's not get away from the story. This is exciting news for Arsenal fans, and I understand why there's there's that light at the end of the tunnel. There is that hope there. And look, the knock on is is that maybe maybe more of the American, the poorly owned American. The club's owned by poor American owners. The, 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 the FSGs in Liverpool's fans' eyes, Man United with the Glazers. Maybe there's a knock-on effect. Maybe there's a another tech billionaire out there that's like, you know what? I'd love to buy Man United for the, these reasons, and I'm going to go and put a consortium together and get that done. Because all these owners will sell for the right money 
or if fa- and if fans keep this energy up, there's no doubt. But those two things for me have to remain. We're going to open up the lines for you all to have your say. Now we are actually live again at like six o'clock, so we won't uh, drag this on too long. Doing a, a I'm going to go now. Thanks for having me on, Terry. No worries, mate. Oh yeah. Also, people in the comments, I see you. I, first of all, all I have to say, allegedly, what you were saying to about me, what where I watch my games is alleged. Allegedly, you know what I'm saying. Uh, second no, of all, man, them. You're acting like I ain't got friends. You're acting like I ain't got I ain't got people that all buy no, into that. KJ, I don't know, into that. You know what I'm saying? Him. KJ's got binoculars, right? And his next door neighbor behind him, he just looks through the back window, watches it on his TV. <laughs> yeah. Knows. Well, you listen, I mean? there, there are ways to do it. And again, allegedly, there are websites that help you get games for free. But I'm not I don't think there is, but allegedly there is. Don't let Dana White hear that. <laughs> Can I quickly say something? Uh, I think sometimes I make the mistake of people interpreting what I'm saying the correct way. And I'm just going through these comments now, which I just, I can't fathom to understand how people can come up with this assumption that, you know, fans like me keep Cronky in a job or fans like me, the reason why Cronky won't sell. I'm saying hurt their margins. Don't buy everything you do. I bet all of the people who are criticising me in the comments, I bet you'll go out and buy a new kit. I bet when 424 release a £75 training top, I bet you're all over it. So don't don't get at me for saying like, oh, I'm still going to go there and support the club as a supporter. I'm not willing to make that sacrifice as what I believe will be detrimental to my players. I'm willing to make other sacrifices. I won't buy the programme. I won't buy the match day beer. I won't buy match day treats, which I don't, I don't do anyway. That will hurt their margins. And then the Cronkies will also take notice. Of course, they'll take more notice at 60,000 fans not being at the stadium. But ask yourself this. If I don't go, best believe a tourist or someone else will buy my season ticket or buy, or buy the ticket. So don't think it's it's going to be, you know, an empty stadium with just me sitting in there going, go on Arsenal, go on Arsenal. No. And don't misinterpret what I'm saying. Just think about what I'm saying. I'm saying hurt their margins, make them take notice, but also support the players. If we can find a balance and still achieve the Cronkies to leave, then wonderful. If we can't, then I'll cross that bridge when it comes to it. But some of the comments, you're just being a little bit delusional. No, that's what, what, yeah, but what, you find, what happens in life is this. So when we, We've done a few videos on here supporting people that have been abused for particular reasons, sexually, as in like sexism, racism, whatever. And then what people do for some real reason is every other scenario that ever happens, they come to you. Why didn't you do a story on this? Why didn't you back the person on that? It's like, well, that person doesn't come on my channel or doesn't fit in with, you know, it isn't, it didn't happen at one of the top six clubs that we cover, or I didn't even see the story. Cause it's, 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 it's like a, a small article in one small newspaper that I didn't read, but it's like, people always look to try and trip you up. And my, you know, I look at it this way. Everyone, you're right about the season ticket money. TV money generates a hell of a lot more for a, a hell of a lot more income for clubs now than season ticket revenue does. I felt for a long, long time again, if I was as rich as someone like this and I was buying Arsenal, I would literally do a sweeping thing where anyone who's had a season ticket for more than 20 years, we give you a 50% discount. Anyone who's had it for more than 30 years, it's free. Like they don't even need the money um, per se anymore uh, with the kind of the TV deals that are on the way. But everyone watching around the world who, who buys or subscribes to whatever network, you're pumping in just as much money. So, you know, let, what is, what is, I want a, uh, a biblical saying here, uh, let, let ye who has not sinned be the one to cast the first stone, you know, and, and Harry's free to, to protest and, and, and push back against Arsenal in his way. None of us should be here telling him what it is that he needs to do. Yeah, there's always time to poke, poke fun. You know, someone standing outside the great stadium saying Cronky out with a bag full of clothes that you bought from the mega store is a little bit ironic. It is. But at the same time, let people live. Like, it ain't, it, you know, it, it is what it is there. Like, people are mad on that. Um, let's do some more of these comments here. Okay, someone's talking about the Man City new kit. Fair enough. Don't buy season tickets is what Jose Mourinho um, has got to say. Well, that's that's your choice, bro. And you don't have to buy tickets um, at all. Chelsea here says, calm down, cronky in. And this is the element here. You will see rivals get, like, really annoyed. Oh, my God, they're going to get rid of their owners. Like, I look at Arsenal getting a new owner and think to myself, it gives me hope. If you get the owner, it gives me hope that one day will be out of this mess. Neek Sports in the house says, sensible people fully understand you, Harry. Um, there we, Harry's in a new room as well. It's really freaking me out, Harry, Harry being in a different room. Yeah, no, we've got, we've got, Harry, we've got a new cat. We've got a new cat, so I've got to look after this cat, and he's just done a, the worst thing out of his backside you've ever smelt, so I might have to go in a second because <laughs> it's stinking up a right kick. That oh, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, Harry, I've got a question for you. In the stadium, besides not buying stuff, what else are you willing to do? Are you there? Are you, like Man United did uh, the green and gold campaign and like nearly Old Trafford was full 
of your yellow and green scarf. They had the banners. Um, like, like, what are you willing to do within the stadium besides not buying the kits? Like, I'm, I'm personally, I'm all for every game flans to st- flood the flood the stadium, bro, flood the pitch, and ruin it, bro. Because I'm here for that. I'm here for them ruining the game just so these these pagans piss off, fam. Like. But, yeah, I yeah. think I think um, I think reasonably, I think something like a mass walkout would be good. I think if we all leave our seats at a certain minute of the game, um, I think that I think they'll start to take notice. I think they'll take notice if no one purchases anything. I know you're asking what else would I do, but you know when they get those get those receipts through at the end of the end of the game, and they see literally there's a drastic drastic decrease on sales of pies of beer. I think that that will that will hold its hold huge a huge amount of weight. So. In terms of what, what am I willing to do? Look, I'm not. I mean, I'm willing to make the make a few sacrifices as long as it doesn't involve, you know, uh, not supporting my team. I'm not going to say to you, I'm going to cut my arm off and chuck it on the pitch and say Kronk is out. You know, uh, I'm only I'm willing totally to go down so- for that if you did. Though, I respect <laughs> if you did. I, I'm only willing to go so far. I'll be honest with you. But in the same respect, I, you know, I, I, I'm out here saying, yeah, I want the want the owners to leave. But I know people in the comments are saying, you know. How can you complain at the Cronkies? But I, I don't complain massively about the Cronkies. I know it sucks, but I know it sucks for nine years. I'm not going to keep on, you know, ba- banging the same job. I'm not going to let it affect my, my daily life, but it is what it is. Let me ask you guys this. Yeah. Go on, genuine mate. Final question. question. Final point, mate. Go on. Genuine question to everyone out there. If Daniel Ike does buy Arsenal, right, and we celebrate and everything happens, but... All the all the people all the people who all the people who were protesting and everything else, we all get what we want, right? At the end of that situation, if the club does not get any better, and everything doesn't change, it would be all for nothing. And I just hope and pray. <laughs> I just hope and pray that if everything does go through, that Daniel Ike and the consortium of people are serious, because I don't want to look at if it doesn't go through, because we already have to deal with that every single day. So if it does go through, we just hope and pray that. Yeah, the change brings change from the top to the bottom and everything changes and there's going to be new players, new uh, new coaching staff, everything that everyone dreams for. Because I'm not saying that I, I necessarily want a new coach, but I'm just saying if everyone wants that, we, we just have to dream for that. Watch this. Yeah, as I say, some takeovers do brilliantly. Others, uh, they take a lot longer. They're slow burners, as it were. But listen, everyone who's tuned in, a massive thank you to each and every single one of you. Really exciting news. We'll keep you abreast um, and up to date with all the, the latest news and quotes. I'm sure there'll be a response from the Cronkies very, very soon. We knew this was kind of coming today. There's no doubt about that. There is a super chat here that says, uh, just from the meltdown, um, I won't be selling. Uh, oh, Stan. He's got his name in his Stan. Yeah, there he yeah. is. Acts like it. I was like, that's a bit of a weird comment, but I hear you on that. We're back at six o'clock previewing the Europa League tyres tomorrow night, as well as having another bit of a debate about the next inductees to the Premier League Hall of Fame. Um, make sure you're all tuning in then. But until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless.